This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Sovereign Metals has confirmed that graphite concentrate from their Casilla project can be processed and into coated spherical purified graphite, which performs comparably to top tier Chinese products. The technological specifics about uh, how this has happened is in the RNS, but Sapan Guy, the CCO, is here today to uh, to talk to us. How are you feeling, Sapan, seeing this news this morning? Oh, look, the, the, the news has been outstanding today, Mark. We, we received the test uh, results. Uh, a few days ago, um, and yeah, they, they blew our mind that we we had we with the more work we've done on Castilla, the more interesting it gets. You know, w whether just as a mining project, as a future supplier, it's just uh, is it the the fact that these results are, are absolute knockout is just another feather in the sovereign cap. Okay, so you're saying that blew your mind, and it's it's a complete knockout. And the RNS does include those very technical uh, elements there. Was this something you specifically had to do or wanted to do, just to to prove or to demonstrate to yourself that you had good enough graphite that you can actually sell to the battery industry? Yeah, let's take it from the top, and let's just go through the story of what we've done with the graphite because I think it's important that um, you know investors, stakeholders understand. Uh, just how you get from graphite in the ground to uh, a graphite anode in a battery that then ends up in your electric vehicle. Because I've made this point a number of times, not all graphite will work in a, ba in a battery. There are a number of specific hurdles that that graphite needs to overcome. It needs to be purified in the right form. It needs to create the right kind of uh, spheres uh, and shaped in the right way. It has to be coated and it has to have the electrochemical properties that make it worthy of ending up in a in a battery. Um, if, if, if you don't have any one of those, it's not going to work. So, you know, mm -hmm. on the purification, we were very lucky because uh, the graphite we have is actually from a weathered form, which means that unlike hard rock graphite, which contains quite high levels of sulfur normally, we don't have that sulfide, uh, sulfide component. So sulfur in a battery, is a no-go, right? So, so that was never an issue for us. In fact, we showed that we could purify our graphite up to 19.99%. You need 19.95% for it to work in a, in a battery. So that worked. Uh, earlier this year on an RNS, we showed that it could be spherenized uh, and created the right type of spheres that could then end up as anode material. Um, what we've got now is that it can be coated and once coated, it forms an anode material that uh, provides all the right, it ticks all the right boxes when it comes to uh, a battery, the initial uh, charge and discharge, uh, the numerous times that it, 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 it can be charged and discharged and the amount of energy that it can actually, um, uh, actually quantify in that battery as well. Uh, and we've shown that we basically meet the standard set by current graphite uh, anode uh, manufacturers uh, that end up in your, you know, your Fords, your Teslas, etc. Um, okay. mo in most cases, we match. Uh, if we don't match, we surpass. Right. Okay. And is this just a, a matter of sort of all the stars aligning, about the geological setting, as you talked about there, the fact that your body is weathered? It, it's really the stars have aligned at this project that perhaps a lot of other graphite deposits around the world just just won't have that that quality. Yeah, we knew quite early on uh, that the graphite had the right properties within the ground. Um, earlier this year, we brought on a new uh, chief uh, technology officer on the graphite side, uh, Dr. Surinder Garg, and he has provided us with this IP of understanding what the graphite looks like in the ground, how you mine it has a major impact on how it acts within a battery. And having that understanding has helped us basically get to get from we have the second largest graphite deposit in the world, where graphite mm. is a byproduct, all the way through to actually this is battery grade graphite that 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 can supply the lithium ion battery sector uh for 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 decades. So you I mean 
you, you, you could argue, you could say that luck is really on your side here. Of course, you were looking for Rutile, you found graphite as a secondary deposit and it seems to all be matching up. I mean, is it fair to say you've had a, a fair amount of luck? Yeah, look, we uh, we still see ourselves as a, uh, as a as a titanium company with the Rutile. Uh, it is the, you know, Kasia, our project in Malawi, is the world's largest Rutile deposit. It's just serendipitous that it's also the second largest graphite deposit. You know, you have those Rutile... <clears throat> you have that re- re- those rutile crystals in in mixed in with the earth alongside graphite flakes. If we separate out the rutile, we just end up with this concentrated graphite waste, for 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 lack of a better word. So so one of the things that we've understood through some of our studies is just building out a little bit of a process on the graphite side means that we could double our revenues with about 15% more capex, which completely makes you know, mm-hmm. economic sense. And you, so you're effectively looking to produce rutile and at the same time get graphite as a byproduct. So running the whole process through as a production and then having two markets to sell into. So, yeah, so both rutile and, you know, specifically titanium and titanium metal and uh, graphite are critical strategic minerals, whether, mm-hmm. whether you look at it from an EU perspective, a US perspective, um, you know, Australia, China, Japan, every, <clears throat> everyone understands the, the criticality of these metals uh, over the coming years. Um, mm-hmm. And for us to sit, sit back and say we could be the largest and lowest cost producer in both those uh, minerals, you know, is, is, is essentially our position it's our it's our market leading position in, in in two sectors but from one deposit okay it's a good position to be in and i know you mentioned earlier of course it, and the rns said that it's that the quality is comparable to that that comes out of china of course we know that china is a huge producer of of uh, these commodities and of course the ev industry batteries etc but how does this result that you've announced today here this testing how does that position you uh, as perhaps an alternative outside of China, of course, particularly given the recent trade restrictions imposed both from the US and from China? Yeah, recently we've seen, um, you, you, you know, these uh, tariffs increased by the mm. US, like the White House put uh, a tariff on all graphite coming out of China. Um, uh, and then the EU put a tariff on uh, any electric vehicles, uh bought in the EU, but manufactured in China. So you can uh, understand all this kind of reshoring, onshoring, Frenchshoring, whatever you want to call it, where, where, where there's this, this need for understanding that there are supply routes outside of China for these critical minerals. You know, uh, a, 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 great, uh, a great case in point is on the Rutile side with the, uh, with the titanium. You know, titanium ends up in a lot of uh, aerospace and defense applications. Most of the titanium that the U.S. Uh, gets or used to get came from uh, came from Russia. Now, when Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, all those sanctions came into play. It really put a spotlight on titanium um, titanium supply chains, uh, and those supply chains have since moved over to Japan. Um, same thing with, on the on the graphite side. When I when I mentioned, you know. About seventy to eighty percent of of graphite that ends up in your electric vehicle actually comes from China. So we so so the whole electric vehicle decarbonization, you know, energy transition strategy is so dependent on Chinese supply. And now now we're here and we're saying we have uh, a potential supply route outside of China. There's no there's no Chinese involvement in our uh, in our project. And we could supply for, you know, based on our PFS, 25 years, but that would only mine 30% of the resource. So really, you're talking about a 50, 60, 70 year uh, deposit here. Okay. I mean, I do want to talk about the work that's going on in a moment, of course, with the pilot plant as you are pushing down, actually advancing this project. Of course, Rio are heavily involved as well at about 19%, if I remember correctly there. And I think any more would perhaps trigger the the takeover uh, situation that, uh, that would come into effect there. But I mean, in terms of um, the strategy for getting into production, but then of course, scaling up, you said it's the second largest in the world. That would be quite an undertaking. One, getting into production, but secondly, scaling up and actually delivering on this. So have you thought about, as a team, thought about the strategy here? Yeah, we we know what we have is a tier one deposit here on, on any 
you know, whether you look at it in terms of size, economics, scale, importance, criticality, strategic uh, positioning, this this is a tier one deposit. You would be, anyone who operates Casilla would be the largest uh, producer of the most wanted uh, titanium feedstock. It would be the largest producer of uh of battery grade graphite. Um, it would be the lowest cost producer of both of those. And as I mentioned, you'd be doing that for, for, for decades. Um, you know, in terms of uh, numbers, you're talking about a quarter of a billion dollars of free cash flow being churned out per year for, for at least 25 years. So this is, this is massively important. Now, what you don't do with a project this size and, and, and scale is toss a coin and hope you know you build it and it all works when you when you switch it on you what you do is what we're doing and is very much in the fashion of what uh, uh, the majors do which is in between studies so we're in between pfs and dfs and understanding what the dfs looks like we're actually going through an optimization phase right now and what that means is we have actually built out pilot scale uh mine uh we are processing um the uh, the, the stockpiled material from that mine uh, will also be backfilling um, the, the mine to understand how uh, the tailings work, the backfilling works, and how how the rehabilitation part of of, uh, of mining Casir would look like. Now, I call it a pilot phase. It's probably the size of a lot of other companies' main project, but it's probably. I would say 10% the size of our kind of stage one and, and about 5% the, the scale of uh, of stage two. We're, we're mining about 170,000 cubic uh, meters. So that's all been done uh, when we're, we're currently in in the phase of hydro mining. Uh, and and that, 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 that RNS went out uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so please look at our socials to understand a bit more about, about hydro mining. Yeah, hydro mining. Okay, yeah, I don't, it's the first time I've heard of that, so it'd be good to check out what's been going on there. But generally, the pilot plant is being built as according to plan. The spiral that we talked about is is in situ. Uh, the environmental studies, it's all going ahead. If you can try and give us an idea of what's happening on site in terms of those plans with the with the whole pilot study. Yeah, we will we'll have all our answers, um, apart from obviously long uh, gestation periods for rehabilitation and revegetation. But we will have answers to... Uh, mining, backfilling, etc., processing probably by the end of October. Okay, good, a good important milestone to look out for. Of course, as well as this, this is a final uh, point here. Of course, the RNS today talking about further optimization of the anode material using concentrate from the the, the current pilot uh, phase that's going on, and you say it will support discussions with potential buyers. So that, of course, begs the question, are you having those discussions already with potential buyers, offtake partners, um, or even people who might want to get involved directly and and, and manufacturers? Uh, I, I think an easier way of looking at that is if you are out there looking to procure uh, battery-grade graphite or uh, the best form of titanium feedstock, surely you should be talking to um, the, the the company which is set to be the largest producer of both and the lowest cost producer of both. Um, so so hopefully that gives you an indication that yes we are we are very busy in those discussions. Okay, well thank you very much of course for your time today, Sapangai, the CCO at Sovereign Metals. Thank you very much, Mark. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.